Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Today we want to continue our fancy garden fence. So I'm standing here in the backyard. We've got our garden fence that's kind of more decorative on the front. And then of course on the back as we get over in the woods, not that big a deal. But we want to continue this. Our timber baseboards that allows us to have a little raised bed, our posts, all that type of stuff. But the real problem I'm running into, of course, is the price of treated lumber. So let's look at an alternative. Come along if you will. So when we built this front portion of the garden two years ago, we used treated lumber to give a decorative edge. Of course, cattle panel here, 16 foot cattle panel, treated four by four posts, and then even ripped down a treated two by four uh, to be the top. We cut a small uh, dado, if you will, um, a groove into this so the panel would fit down in it. And then of course just screwed some edges on the on the verticals there to kind of hold them in place. So that was back when treated lumber made sense and it wasn't super expensive. Now we could get into the discussion of treated lumber in your garden and there's a lot of debate over this new copper treated lumber that it's okay and then some say no it's not. But um, you know, you go with what you can afford, go with what you can do, of course. So as we want to continue this, we want to do two more sections. So two more 16 foot sections before we just transition over to welded wire and go back up the edge of the woods. So my last stop at the box store this week revealed to me that a treated two by six, eight feet long is $17. And I about dropped my teeth. I mean, literally teeth. And it's just ridiculous. You know, this, some lumbers come back down, but any of this post-production lumber, like uh, things that need treated, uh, sheet goods, engineered material, all that stuff is just still extremely high. So I'm not gonna use treated two by sixes. I still have some treated four by four posts from where I bought them two years ago down in the barn. So we're gonna use those, but we're going to use some wood off the sawmill, but we're going to have to come up with a way to treat it so it doesn't rot away in just a matter of years. All right, so I need four boards, four eight foot long boards that are gonna be ground contact and run the length of my two cattle panels. You know, 16 feet each, 32 feet, four eight footers, 32. My West Virginia math's working, I think that's right. So what I pulled from my pile are two pine and two poplar. And I will say that I'm being extra scientific because I wanna test the two, or I could say, well, that's kind of what I had on top of my scrap pile. Anyway. You decide. So with this pine and poplar, I know if I just stick them in the ground, uh, the bugs are gonna jump all over them, uh, the fungus, all that's gonna start eating and rotting and, and decaying those down the way God intended. So we wanna try to slow that down a little bit. No, I'm not going against God's will, but I think I'm just delaying it some. So what we wanna do is wanna try the burning method. You've probably seen this all over YouTube. A lot of people do it. I've never tried it yet, to be honest with you. So we're gonna give it a shot. I. Uh, the correct pronunciation, I don't know. A West Virginian trying to speak Japanese isn't the most eloquent thing. So shoshugi bon, whatever the case it's called, we're gonna give it a shot here. Now the key is I have to do some sizing this, of course cut it to full eight feet, then also go ahead and cut my uh, dado, cut my groove in there so it can hold the cattle panel. And you know, with my ends cut, I don't wanna burn it now and then go do these cut pieces and have exposed wood. So we're actually gonna do all the work and then burn it and see if we can do it without uh, you know, burning it up completely. <laughs> I don't have one of those little flame weeder torches that, that some of the guys use. We're gonna start a good old fashioned heathen fire and dance around it as we uh, get some of our wood burning. All right, so by cutting this dado 
channel, whatever you want to call it, into this board. And that's going to give me a place for the cattle panel to just sit right down in there. So it'll kind of lock in. And again, we want to try to protect this from rot because there's going to be water standing in this on a regular basis. So that's where we really want to get if the fire, if, if charcoaling or, or a scorching that works, then uh, we want to get as much flame in that as possible to protect that when it starts to hold water. Right, now I just need to do four more. All right, so that's all four of those. And uh, the groove's not centered. I just set a reference line because my boards are different thicknesses. So I just wanted to reference and we'll just make sure we turn them all the right direction. Um, you know, it's funny, I've been, uh, I've had this Harbor Freight boat anchor of a router for probably 15 years now. And I've always been critical of it because the, the guides come loose, all that type of thing. But, you know, I've, I've run this thing through the ringer. It's, it's kind of crazy that 15 years it still runs. Sounds like something's dying when you run it, but it's getting the job done. All right, let us kindle a fire. Right out. All right, so we've got four pieces of crispy chicken here that uh, I think is going to work. So here's my takeaway from my first try at doing this. First of all, make sure your fire's not too big. Because <laughs> when you go in to reach in there, you're stepping into an inferno. Second of all, wear gloves. Third, the longer your fire is, actual length, then of course you can do more wood that way. And the thing I realized is with this little channel, even though I want to get it protected... I wasn't able to get a super clean burn down in there, as you can see. You can probably see a little bit of light colored wood there. But the problem was that there's parts already starting to, this little tab, of course, being so thin of wood, was already starting to burn up. So I didn't want to... So I didn't want to lose that tab completely in exchange for the groove. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, green wood does much better than dry wood. So the two pieces of pine were still relatively green. They had been milled in the last year, last year, the last month. The poplar had been milled probably about eight months ago. And 
What's interesting too is the checking. Look at this checking on the poplar. So of course those cracks are exposing raw wood or natural wood. So that could be an issue as well. We'll see. This is definitely an experiment. Where I've been studying this, it looks like that this could maybe get you an extra two to three to five years, just depending on your soil type. I know some of you guys are saying, why don't you just use cedar or some of those other rot resistance wood? Well, I want to use what I have, of course. I don't want to go out and spend the money. If I wasn't going to spend money on treated, I don't want to go spend money on the cedar. Um, probably the best rot resistant wood I have on the farm is white oak. And I just don't have any white oak down. I didn't want to go out and cut any just now to... Uh, to harvest it and bring it in. So uh, we're going to try this and see how it goes. I got tons of poplar, I got tons of pine, so we want to give that a go. All right, so next we're going to start getting this installed. All right, so it's the next day and we're going to uh, hopefully get some stuff done. You may be thinking, hey, Troy looks a little late in the day. How come you're getting you're slow getting started? Well, I want to take this opportunity to be um, extremely transparent, maybe too transparent. So um, I want to preface this with I know a lot of people watching all these homesteading channels, us included, and, and the much bigger ones, of course. You, know, you you think if if you're not in that position, you think oh I'd like I'd like to be there. I'd love to have that. I'd love to have all those things at some point and live a simpler lifestyle and I'll just say it's it's not as simple as I even thought it would be or still think it would be at times it seems to rear up and bite me on the rear end and this morning was no um, was no exception to that so I got up at six this morning with a, an incredibly potent panic attack and I've only suffered with those for about three years now. I'm 49 years old, and it's just something new in my life. And it's, it's really been an eye-opener for me because I'm not used to dealing with um, mental health, if that makes any sense. You know, kind of old-school Appalachian, just suck it up and get on with it type of thing has always been my attitude. And, and so now I've been dealing with that. So this morning was probably the... I probably had four in the last three years, and this was this had to have been the second worst, and it lasted for several hours. And what happens is after that, that just it's even tough to describe. Those of you that had them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But after that, I just feel like I feel like I've worked two full days straight on a production line or digging ditches or something. I am just absolutely beat. But I've discovered the best way to get through them is to work. So. If you see me dragging around here and looking like I'm moving in slow motion, that's not the camera, it's me, and that's why. But So just, just take into consideration that. I know we have a negative stigma about mental health in the United States, in most places, I guess. But just, just don't let yourself get spread too thin and be ready to do a check from time to time as to what's really stressing you out. And that's what's I've been able to do is do inventory and, and have to adjust from time to time. So that's where we are. So that's probably why we're not going to get as much done on this project as I'd like to in this video. So I would like to ask those of you that do pray, and many of you expressed your faith through your comments, and I really appreciate that. Um, pray for me if you would. Pray that I could be shown um, where the stresses in my life are that I can correct and clearly identify the ones that I can't. All right, well, let's get back to work. <laughs> All right, so the way this should need, work then is that this first post hole needs to be right here. Well, that's where the cattle panel lands. Of course, the only cattle panel I have this is the best one I've got. It has a big chunk taken out of it, so we'll have to straighten that up. Post hole digging time. Who should do it? The 49 year old or the 16 year old? <laughs> there you go.
over the last seven, eight years, however long we've had a garden here, when we had this excavated, there's of course a lot of rock and stone. So when you find a rock, you want to chuck it over the hill. And then somebody had to get a golden retriever. So when you want to chuck a rock over the hill because you don't want it in the garden, this is what happens. You done? Right here, drop it. Now don't go get it this time, knucklehead. No, no, stay, Timber, no. <laughs> Part of no do you not understand, turkey? Since it wants to come forward, but I'll tamper real quick. Be a great girl. Are you? Okay. We did it right. We should be able to set it right in that groove. All right, for that, we decided to come down here to the workshop and go ahead and get our top rails cut because I did not do those the other day. Those don't have to be burned because, of course, they're going to be four and a half feet off the ground and out of the uh, dirt. So Camelin just routed a channel here for us. And um, the old fence was a treated two by four that I just ripped in half and then cut the channel. So that's, um, you know, what is that? Three and a half divided by two. That's one and three quarter. So that was a little bit small. And what happened is those, um, that horrible lumber you get at box stores, it twisted and arched and all that type of stuff. So this poplar is much more stable and this is a true two by six. So we're going to cut it in half. So that'll give us three inches. And to cut it in half, we've done our groove on one side of each and then we'll go over to the um, sawmill, rip it long ways vertically or on its edge, so we can get our three inches out. And you say, why don't you go ahead and cut the grooves on both sides? We would, except there's a whole bunch of wane on the other side of both of these boards that I can't route. So I need to use the cut edge after we run it through the mill. I'll show you when we get over there. All right, so here's the groove side. And we want to mill it in half, but here's the opposite side. You can see there's more wane than there is anything, which will be fine if this is the non-groove side, it'll be the top and it'll actually run water off. So that'll tickle me to death, but we obviously need to cut it and then go back and cut our grooves. And that is much easier than taking it in there and putting it on the table saw and ripping it. <laughs> Not to mention it keeps my table saw from getting dirty. That's a little bit. Yep, this is one of our arches. All right, so Cam and I were able to get those two sections in. 
Got our bottom rail that's burnt, of course, for soil, for erosion, for rot protection. Holy moly. And then the top rails, of course, just to keep it all together and looking sexy. And it's got a little bit of a fish belly. Those uh, cattle panels are the ones we use for trellises, or not only arch trellises, but bean trellises and stuff. So they've gotten a little wonky. So I'm going to go in along the four by fours, and we're going to add a um, just a vertical strip that takes this bow out. You can see, you can see how this is bowed here. So we'll put some strips in there, line that up, and that'll make it even tighter. You guys didn't tell me. I was looking at my uh, shadow when I was standing here working. I looked at my shadow and I thought Bozo the Clown was standing behind me. Definitely passed you for a haircut. Okay, but the, uh, so once we get past here, then we got to start curving. And of course, this style of fence doesn't really take into account curving. We could do night, we could do angles, 45 degrees and stuff. But at this point, since we're so far back here against the woods, we're just going to go to our welded wire with T-posts and we're going to actually raise that an extra three feet with electric. And that's going to be another video where I show you how we modify some T-posts so that we can raise that with some step-in posts that will then hold polytwine, the electric to keep the deer from trying to jump over. You know you're running out of gas when you sit down to do your project. So what I'm using for these braces is actually, uh, this is why I find it hard to throw anything away or burn anything. So these are just Wayne, you know, the abs, well Wayne's technically the absence of wood, but the, uh, where I was squaring up a cant and I had a slab left, I took the slabs and cut those square so I could use them for barriers, kind of retain, retaining walls, the chicken church, and then my father-in-law came and got a bunch of them for his garden. So when you do that, you get this triangular shaped piece. And so that works perfectly for kind of fitting in here, almost like a brick mold, just kind of fits in there, straightens up the fence and uh, screws down nicely. One thing you may have noticed in our digging around here, we've got comfrey coming in. And when we planted that comfrey last year, we were kind of eyeballing where we thought the fence was going to be. So we got a little close to the fence, but it's actually going to work out pretty well. And there's comfrey about every, about every two feet. So we know about comfrey, it's going to grow up real big, it's going to hang over, and it becomes a really good weed barrier. So we're hoping that it becomes a weed stop. Uh, the garden will grow up to this side, and then the comfrey will grow up, keep the weeds, and of course the fence will be a clear, demar clear demarcation. It even grows through there, of course the deer and the rabbits, they can have their fill. Um, but anything on this side, of course, will be a weed barrier. All right, I think that's where we'll wrap up. My gas gauge is showing empty. And I think that's a good place to stop anyway. Well, we appreciate everybody watching, really appreciate the comments. And thanks again for the prayers. Take care, everybody.